and the first thing we need to configure is the FS tab so as it says the default FS tab is not a valid FS tab but it's provided as a template so that's why we need to go in here now and make some modifications so what we need to do here is to edit these lines here and make some changes um, we've not used any labels so we can get rid of that but we have used UUIDs or we will be using UUIDs um, so we need one here for the boot and we'll also need a UUID for the root directory as well so I'll just rub them out get them prepared again we've got no labels for the swap but we have got or we will have a UUID for that uh, there's no CD-ROM but you could leave that activated in case you plug in a um, a uh, external CD-ROM so that's um, something that you could leave there uh, so that's all we need for the moment so if I save that uh, no actually uh, yes I will do I'll go back in there and I'll use this other tab to find out what UUIDs we need so again we can use the block ID command and we need to know the UUID for the boot partition so that's dev stroke if I do SDA star it will show us all the partitions for the SDA device and you can see the UUID for the uh, boot partition which is our first partition if you recall is this number here so that's the number I need to copy into this position here just after this first UUID so I'll just paste that in there and if I go back the next one we need to copy is the root partition so the root partition is SDA3 so I need to copy this UUID here and paste that in there and lastly oops sorry that's the wrong one isn't it that's the swap I'll just put it against it should be there and then I need to do likewise with the swap partition so again go back here swap partitions partition 2 grab the UUID for that go back and paste that in there now you can see all the columns have gone out of bonk so it might be worth just getting rid of they've got tabs in here just getting rid of the tabs putting a space in just to separate the columns and just kind of line them up a little bit just to make them a bit more readable and that should be it oh, looks like those should actually be further over okay so that, that should be it. So we've got the boot partition with 2337-48CA which is that one there and the reason why it's a smaller UID is because it's uh, just a VFAT so it only uses this, I think that would be 32-bit UUID and then we've got the root partition beginning 39F2 there it is there, 39F2 and the swap beginning CC86 and there's a swap there CC86 so I'll save that with control X yes and press enter now the Raspberry Pi hasn't got an internal clock so as soon as you power off the Raspberry Pi it forgets the time and when you boot it up it has no concept of what the time is and it's only um, scripts and things when the Raspberry Pi boots that the time is able to be set correctly so what we need to do is to emulate that um, by installing a network timing daemon which will run at boot up now it does produce a few warnings and things at boot up that it, 
you know, it knows that the time's incorrect or there's some skew detected. Um, but they're safe warnings. You can ignore them. Uh, when when you do get the prompt up, you have got the correct time set. It does um, contact the server and update the time, so it's not a problem. Um, so let's just skip past this. Uh, oh, actually, yeah, I'll do the clock a little bit later. Actually, let's finish with these um, this network information. So. Next thing, we've, we've done the um, FS tab, so skip down to the host information, host and domain name, domain name information. So let's edit this file, which is the host name that we're going to define. So I'm just going to call this RPI 400. So this is the actual name of the machine, the computer name, if you like. Save that. Remember what you've set here because you'll need it elsewhere. Um, now we're going to modify the uh, network config and I'll just copy this here, paste that in and it needs a domain name here so I use mynet.org, you can set whatever you want for yours. Uh, so save that and if you've got a NIST domain it's got some more configuration name unlikely to be using that I imagine um, next thing we need to do is to um, emerge this package here or at least add it to the world set it already exists but this command is adding it to the world set So you can see it's added it to the world favorite file. And then we need to edit this network file to configure it for the network. And uh, you can see this is the one we've just edited. Uh, we're going to add some more information here. You can see why it's a lot easier to use a wired network. Um, it's just these two lines that we need to add in and modify. If it was wireless, there'd be a lot more configuration involved. So all you need to do here is to adjust your... IP address that you're using, static IP address, and modify the gateway, which for me is as it is there. So I've only had to change the last digit of the IP address. So that should be sufficient. Um, if you're using DHCP, then it tells you here how to use that. Um, I've never tried it, but it should work out of the box. I'm pretty sure DHCP is part of the default build, um, but there's some more information there about it. Automatically start networking at boot. So we need to change into this etc init d directory, make a sim link from that network file we just created to our network interface, and then add it to the startup scripts that will um, be activated when the Raspberry Pi is powered up. So the next one we'll do is the host file and here we just need to, well I'm going to remark out this um, IPv6 because I don't use it and all I need to do is add in my IP address that I just used and put in the name of this computer the fully qualified domain name so mynet.org plus the short form and you can see why I said you need to remember what the host name is um, and I think you can even put local host in here I think that will work as well but uh, the example hasn't got that, but they have got the um, loopback address there as local host. So that should be that, that one. Um, in fact, they've even got the 
yeah they've got the current system against 127 so I could put that there as well that should both work Um, if you need PCM CIA working, it tells you how to do that. Obviously, you haven't got that on the Raspberry Pi. Next thing that's important is a password. And this is the root password. That's been done. Um, so, there's some other boot and init configuration here. Normally, you don't need to make any changes to this. Uh, but you might want to read through it in case there is anything that you want to change. There's lots of comments there. Um, next thing we need to do is to modify the key map, specify what keyboard to use. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't give any information about where to look for valid key map names there, but I'm sure you'll be able to find that on the internet. Defaults to US key keyboard. For me, all I need to do is change that to UK. Um, there's no other changes there. Um, now it says about modifying the hardware clock. Now the, as I said, the Raspberry Pi hasn't got a hardware clock, so um, we don't actually make any changes to this. Um, and what we need to do is to add in some network time protocol server or clients to communicate with a, a network time protocol server to get the time. At, every time it boots up um, so all we need to do here is to emerge NTP no one AV this time because we want to add this to the world file we don't want this to be removed at any time that we tidy up the system so just emerge NTP AV you can see there's four packages that can be pulled in here and the one that we want to add to the world has been highlighted in a brighter green. So these ones haven't been updated uh, or added or won't be added to the world set, which means that if there are no dependencies that require them anymore, um, when we do the tidy up, that they will actually be removed because there's no need for them anymore. So we'll just get this installing. This will take maybe a few minutes to build.
Okay, so that has compiled now and installed. So what we need to do first of all is to um, do some configuration changes to enable this. So if we do nano forward slash etc forward slash conf dot d forward slash mtp client. Um, um, what you can change here is the time servers. The default ones for Gen 2 are usually sufficient. Um, I'm actually going to change this because I've got my own NTP server. So I'm going to just put in the IP address of that. And the other thing you can change it hit uh, the other thing you can change here is this line here. Um, I tend to um, disable this and use an IP address up here in case the DNS server is not available. Um, if it's not available then obviously you won't be able to translate the IP address and synchronize the time. So um, it's up to you whether you do this or not. Um, it does mean that you'll need to find out the IP addresses of your time servers and modify this line instead of having, for example, Gen 2 time servers to find out what the IP addresses are of those and put them in here. Um, but apart from that, there's no other changes to be done there. Um, then we need to add this to the list of scripts that are run at boot up. So we use the RC update add NTP client. And it goes in at the default run level. That's done. And then we need to delete the hardware clock script because, as I said, we haven't got a hardware clock at boot time. And we add a software clock to boot time. And that should be now sufficient to set the time um, when the Raspberry Pi is booted. So let's go on to the next section which is about installing some tools. And there's things like system logs, loggers here, um, cron, cron uh, tab type tools. Um, which can be installed. So I'm just going to install a few of these. Um, I'll start with um, the syslogd. Um, in fact, I'm going to use the ng and log rotate as well. It's syscalogd, isn't it? No, it isn't. What is it? Syscalogd. Oh, syslog ng. Syslog ng. Right, get the spelling right. And the reason why I'm installing log rotate at the same time is because of this tip here. It says that if uh, either syskalogd or syslogng are going to be used, recommended to install and configure log rotate afterwards. So that's why I'm doing both of these at the same time. So let's install these, and when that's done, just do a little bit of configuration and carry on then.
Okay, so those two packages and all the dependencies have been installed. Let's just check the output. Looks like Crony was installed, which is the next package I was going to install anyway. Um, so if we run this, com uh, sorry, not that one. Oh yes, that's uh, before I do that. Not to forget to add this syslog ng to the um, startup scripts. So RC update add syslog dash ng default. So that's that. Yeah, so if I uh, was to run this emerge command to emerge crony it's going to come back saying that it's, it's um, already installed and do you want to reinstall it so rather than reinstall it I'm going to put the no replace command in or option and all that will do is as you can see it will add it to the world file uh, in case if I didn't do that and there was whatever dependency required crony was removed or didn't need it anymore then it would mean crony would get removed from the system and then I'd be without a um, cron daemon to run processes at a regular time so that's installed already let's add that to the startup scripts that's done um, if you use dcronrefcron you need to do this command here uh, to initialize system um, file indexing can add in this mlocate command package rather for location tools so I think this is a quite a small package it won't take long to install Okay, that's done. Um, this is worth having if you want to access your Raspberry Pi remotely. SSH is already installed, the daemon's already installed, but adding that to the runtime scripts, the boot time scripts, means that the daemon will be activated, ready and waiting to take any connections. That's done. Um, there's a bit there about serial consoles if you need that, or other file system tools. The default one. E2FS progs will already be installed, but the other ones will be optional. Um, there's a bit there about a DHCP clients if that's necessary, and some wireless tools. As I said before, I'm not dealing with that. Uh, I've got wire connection, um, and again, I thoroughly recommend you use wire, wire connection if you haven't done already. Uh, so, bootloader grub2, as you've seen, we're not using that. Raspberry Pi has got its own booting system, so this would be um, meaningless. Uh, one thing I'm going to do before I reboot the system is to um, add a user. So I'll use the user add commands minus m minus g with the groups I want it to be part of. We'll enable us to give the user pseudo access, audio to give it audio access, video video and also um, GUI access if you wanted to build a GUI system CD-ROM to allow it to mount CD-ROM and USB is useful as well for any USB devices bin bash is the shell 
and the name is Kermitex. And then the next thing I need to do is to set the password. And that's it, I've got a user ready to go. So let's now start shutting the Raspberry Pi down. I'll come out of this tab. I'll come out of this troot tab as well. Come out of this troot. CD it's got there. Unmount all directories that we've been using. And unmount the hard disk too. And finally, reboot. So I'm not going to reboot immediately like that. Let me just set these tabs just in case I need to come back and do some fixing, which I hope I won't need to do. Um, continue where you left off, just so I don't lose these tabs in case I need to look them up again. Let's close that down and I'll shut this tab down as well. Right, that was taking some time probably because of the SD card. Shut that down and what I'm going to do is I'll shut down this system to allow me to unplug the SD card. I'm leaving the hard disk plugged in. So once it's powered off, which it has done now, I'm going to remove the SD card. So there's nothing plugged into the Raspberry Pi to boot from apart from the hard disk. I'm going to power it up now and just wait to see what happens and hopefully we'll have a successful boot.